Coming up next in the news, Japan resumes whale hunting after a 30-year ban. Virtual legal aid services opened up across the state. And a drug crackdown in the Midwest. Details on GWN7 after the final chase. This is GWN7 Local News with Noel Brunning and Shauna Willis. New technology brings face-to-face -face legal advice to remote communities. Rex Airlines hits back at claims of bullying and a poor safety culture. Is Japan's return to commercial whaling good news for WA's whale populations? And severe weather warnings ahead of a strong cold front set to hit the state tomorrow. It's now 5.30 and we're live across Western Australia. Good evening. The worlds of technology and the law have come together in WA with legal aid opening virtual offices across the regions. The plan is to make face-to-face -face legal advice available to people in remote areas. This technology means it's now possible to get free face-to-face -face advice from a lawyer who's hundreds of kilometres away. While the advice has always been available over the phone, the face-to-face -face contact will be a game-changer for some. Sometimes it's very difficult communicating to someone in Halls Creek over a legal matter, they might have documents there, uh, they want to explain things. Rocky Byrne, GWN7 News. Rex Airlines has described comments about its safety standards as defamatory, reckless and irresponsible. The regional airline is in the spotlight after a group of engineers took their complaints to the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, alleging workplace bullying and a poor safety culture. Today, the airline hit back. It's a bitter war of words. Today, Rex Airlines, whose destinations include Albany, Esperance, Carnarvon and Monkey Maya, issued a statement slamming remarks over allegations of a poor safety culture. We took our concerns to CASA and insisted they apply proper process and afford Rex due procedural fairness. CASA have assured us this will occur. Stephanie Humiston, GWN 7 News. Carnarvon police have charged a 33-year-old man over an attack on a 71-year-old man. The alleged attacker from Perth has been charged with aggravated grievous bodily harm over the incident on Monday night on Olivia Terrace, which left the elderly man with serious injuries. He was initially treated in Carnarvon Hospital before being transferred to Royal Perth Hospital. Police say the attack appears to be unprovoked. Carnarvon detectives arrested the man this morning. There's been a major drugs crackdown in the Midwest. Detectives based in Geraldton coordinated a three-day blitz against methamphetamine dealers across the region, seizing thousands of dollars worth of drugs, cash and ammunition. This is the result of a three-day operation targeting illicit drug dealers in the Midwest and Gascoigne area. During the operation, which began on Tuesday last week, police raided 11 properties and arrested 14 people. Christina Simich, GWN 7 News. The State Administrative Tribunal has dismissed a bullying complaint against the Mayor of Port Hedland, Camillo Blanco. The ruling was made by the State Administrative Tribunal following allegations he'd threatened Councillor George Takash in November 2017. The Tribunal considered CCTV footage as part of its investigation and found the Councillor was not a truthful witness. However, the Council is still dealing with a show cause notice issued by Local Government Minister David Templeman over allegations it is dysfunctional and that there there is a lack of trust between councillors. A WA whale tour operator says the news that the Japanese have resumed commercial whaling in their waters comes as a relief for our local whale populations. The Japanese have now stopped hunting minke whales in Antarctic waters for scientific purposes. The Japanese are back hunting whales commercially again after a gap of 30 years. During that time, it had been hunting minke whales in the Antarctic for what it called research purposes, but that's now stopped. What this means for our humpbacks and southern right whales is also good news. They no longer need to hunt and feed in areas where active whaling is happening. So there will be a huge reduction in their stress levels without that noise and distress with the minke whales being hunted. Stephanie Humiston, GWN 7 News. A driver has walked away from a serious crash after hitting a truck in Harvey last night. The crash happened at the intersection of Citella Drive and South West Highway at 7 o'clock. The impact of the crash caused the ute to slide under the truck. The road had to be closed while the crash debris was cleaned up.
New statistics from the University of Western Australia show that in some country areas, only half the kids in the community have been vaccinated. It's a problem made worse by the difficulty in attracting doctors to the regions. Vaccines are one of the most successful advances in health, saving hundreds of millions of lives worldwide. Yet an alarming number of parents in Australia are still choosing not to vaccinate their children. Caitlin Donaldson, GWN 7 News. Shauna Willis joins us now with weather. Almost the return of summer today. Yes, sunshine <laughs> and just a trace of rain to the south. Clear skies and easterlies have seen some nice warm temperatures moving through here, sort of a northern half. And similar winds, in fact, for much of the state as a large high moved further east today. 33 in Wyndham. Derby got to 32. WA's highest maximum recorded at West Roebuck, 34 degrees. It reached 30 at Poor Headland, also today at Marble Bar. 25, the top there in Exmouth. A Carnarvon had a top of 28. That was just before 2pm. It dropped to 9 in Geraldton before 25. And look, another cool night for some across the goldfields. We had a top today of 18 degrees for Kalgoorlie. A sunny 20 for Bunbury. Albany down to 3 this morning before 19. Now, it was a chilly start for the inland south. It dropped to 1 degree in Collie and Wandering. While to the far east, 20 today for Esperance. Now, the rain map looks dry, but we had a number of reports south till 9 this morning. Most were under 1 millimetre, but we did have... Three Three meals at Quida there. That's in the Great Southern and two meals out of East Beverly. Our weather wall and a big hello to Claire, Taylor Shane and Phoebe from Newman Primary at Calabarin High. Nevaeh and Jacob check the gauge. And thanks to Maggie, Poppy and Bowden at Mount Many Peaks Primary. Now weather warnings have been issued for tomorrow as a cold front brings the return of winter conditions. All the latest details right after sport. Thank you Sean. Also ahead Corellas causing havoc in Geraldton. Local politicians call for action and Country WA prepares to celebrate NAIDOC week. Stay in touch 24-7 at gwn7.com.au Flocks of Corellas are causing chaos in Geraldton. They've attacked electric cables all over the city and severely damaged St Francis Xavier Cathedral. Now there are calls for the council to take extreme action. It's not a cyclone or a hailstorm, but the damage could compare. Last Friday, Western Power cut electricity to St Francis Xavier Cathedral in Geraldton due to a safety risk caused by exposed electrical wires caused by Corellas. It's used in the US and it would be good if we could get hold of it and give it a go and see if that works here. But Father Cross says culling should also be considered. Their numbers have got to be drastically reduced to get them back to what they were originally in the balance of nature in this area. Yvonne Ardley, GWN7 News. A man has had a once-in-a-lifetime encounter with a massive manta ray off the Ningaloo Reef as the four-metre beauty allowed him to remove fish hooks from under her eye. Jake Wilton, a photographer with Ningaloo Marine Interactions, was on a trip shooting for Tourism WA when he spotted the ray named Freckles. Jake says he free-dived down to her. She rolled over, letting him remove hooks and fishing line. For her to approach and to work out who I was out of, you know, out of five or six people in the water, she was coming to me. It just showed the intelligence of the animal and how quickly she learned that we were there to help and we weren't a threat. Jake says they have seen a rise in marine animal injuries in the area due to an increase in tourism. Preparations are underway across country WA for NAIDOC week. Celebrations officially begin on Sunday. This year's theme is focused on cultures working together for a shared future. United with food and song, preparations have begun for NAIDOC week, celebrating Indigenous culture and recognising the contribution of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to society. Coming up next in sport, a Goldfields footy team hoping for just its second win of the season. And South West soccer stars gear up to compete at an international competition.
A Bunbury soccer team is putting in the final preparations for the largest international youth football tournament in the Southern Hemisphere, the Kanga Cup. The players who will be taking part can't wait for the matches to start. These Bunbury under-12s boys and under-13s girls, soccer players are getting ready to kick some goals. Now to football in the goldfields and the Railways Panthers are looking to secure just their second win of the season after taking down reigning GFL champions Mines Rovers. It was the first win for the Panthers at Pantherland this season where they have dominated all four quarters, beating Mines by 21 points. This weekend for round 14, Boulder City will take on Mines Rovers at Digger Doors Oval and top of the table team Kalgoorlie City will travel to Cambalda to take on the Eagles. Railways have a bye. Shauna Willis is back next with a look at your Thursday weather and then ahead in Seven News, a flu tragedy as the deadly virus claims the life of a two-year-old boy. Hi everyone and happy 100th birthday to Fred Rose of Eton for yesterday. Now we hear you had quite the celebration on the weekend. Daisy Hammond of Waruna turned 95 years young today and happy 65th wedding anniversary to Joan and Alan Lamb of Argyll. OK, on to your weather and the warnings are out for damaging winds and heavy rainfall up to around 50 millimetres to the west coast between Geraldton and Augusta with a strong cold front reaching the southwest capes. That'll be about 5 a.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, uh, showers with thunderstorms are expected to reach as far up through here, though, to the Pilbara, south right down through to the goldfields by evening. Then for Friday, it's possible small hail with thunderstorms south of Durian Bay down through to Israelite Bay, contracting back to that south coast by midday and then clearing later. Showers through southwestern districts should be easing over inland areas as well. And then our weekend, Saturday, we've got another high developing. Still some showers to the west coast, sitting south of Geraldton and along that southern coastline. Meanwhile, there's not a lot of change in weather to our north the next few days. You enjoy that sunshine. And Sunday, while still some cloud about to the south, mostly warm and dry to the north, while onshore winds should just bring some showers around about to the lower and around that sort of southwest corner as well. It's pretty sunny tomorrow for the Kimberley, Halls Creek, a top of 29 for Cunanar at 30, reaching 32 in Wyndham, a warm 34 forecast for Broome, Caratha 27 and expect some afternoon thundery showers reaching as far as Exmouth 26 there, rain and a possible storm 25 for Carnarvon, severe weather warning right down into the central west for Geraldton 21 and 17 the top there for Mora, severe weather south, possible damage in winds, rainfall to 50 mil to the coast, a top of 18 for Bunbury. It's 17 there tomorrow for Albany and pretty similar conditions through the wheat belt, just 16 for Northern. Late showers and windy to the southeast. We've got a top of 21 tomorrow there for Esperance. It is mostly sunny for the goldfields, but a late thundery shower is forecast for Kalgoorlie and 22. Northern waters, now conditions moderate to fresh from the Kimberley, right down through to that Gascoyne coastline. Strong wind warnings from Geraldton waters reaching gale for so for waters through here off Bunbury and that Lewin coastline. And strong winds are expected for waters off the southern coastline from Albany right through to Esperance. Rain, 19 for Sydney tomorrow. Adelaide, a nice rather sunny 16 for Perth. Storms and heavy falls, 18 degrees. Take care and good night. Thank you, Shauna. That's GWN 7 News Sport and Weather for another Wednesday. For news at any time or to watch our full bulletin again, please head to our website, gwn7.com.au or join the conversation on our Facebook page. 7 News from Perth is next from our team right across the state. Good night, Western Australia.